Harlequin beetle looks formidable, and it is. This bug's body reaches 3 inches in length, and its front legs are often even longer than that. They help it crawl on trees, getting from branch to branch, and males also use them to impress females. Ooh la la! Despite the looks, harlequin beetles aren't really dangerous. They won't bite you even if you corner them. And if you, by any chance, grow cabbage in your backyard, you probably would try to corner them. These bugs feed on its leaves. Still, better not to touch them with your bare hands. They exude a foul-smelling liquid that both stinks and stings, causing skin irritation. Wear those gloves, will ya? You know what also stinks? Now, besides my socks, squash bugs. If you have a garden patch, these pests can be more than just a nuisance. They could spoil the squash you've been lovingly growing for the fall, hence the name. And if you squash them, they begin to smell just awful, hence the pun. Squash bugs are also often mistaken for stink bugs, but those are even more notorious. They begin stinking even if you so much as touch them. Wow, sensitive! Giraffe weevil is probably the most harmless little fella on this list, but not much is known about it yet. It gets its name from the long, spiny neck. This adaptation helps them build nests and fight over other weevils for food and mates. It may be placid, but the red covering of its wings lets predators know the bug is either foul-tasting or poisonous, or both. Likewise, you shouldn't eat monarch butterflies or their caterpillars. These beautiful insects are often kept as pets and were once almost chosen as the national insect of the US. But the little-known fact is that they're highly poisonous. Monarchs feed on milkweed, a plant containing a potent toxin. They've acquired immunity to it, and as a side effect, butterflies accumulate the toxin in their bodies. This makes them a very unappetizing dish for birds and other predators. The concentration is so high that even humans that accidentally, or not, eat a monarch caterpillar can experience quite unpleasant consequences. Mm. Mealworm beetles are abundant almost anywhere, so you must have seen them. The most probable place to find them is a poultry farm, though. Mealworm larvae are often used to feed farm birds, and that's where the danger lies. Mealworms carry lots of diseases that can spread among birds and then to humans. They also like to eat chicken food and even insulation on farms, so they're not the best choice of a meal for birds, despite their name. And adult beetles produce a poison that's not harmful in small doses but causes allergy in high concentrations. If you happen to be at a poultry farm, make sure you avoid those beetles. Tiger beetles come in lots of shapes and colors, but they all have two traits in common long thin legs, and sharp sword-like mandibles. Those legs allow them to run faster than almost any other insect. So fast, in fact, that when they're on a hunt, they sometimes have to stop and look around for a few seconds. Their eyes and brain simply can't process the picture quickly enough, so they wait for the landscape to load around them. Most tiger beetles are harmless, but if you see one with an orange pattern on its back, don't touch it! These bugs produce cyanide to protect themselves, and this chemical can do a lot of harm both to animals and people. If you touch a tiger beetle and then rub your mouth or eyes, it might cause severe irritation. Oh look! See that wonderful pattern on a flower over there? Looks like an impressionist painting, and in a sense it is. That's a Picasso bug. These critters feed on plants and are mostly placid. But think twice if you want to take a closer look. It's not a ladybug. When touched, it'll emit a strong odor that's not exactly flowery. Worse still, you might have a hard time getting rid of the stench even hours after the encounter. Whew! Walking out of a pine forest, you notice a weird movement right beneath your feet. It looks like a little fuzzy train that's several dozen feet long. In fact, it's a defense technique of pine processionary caterpillars. They travel nose to tail in large groups to protect each other. 
They look really particular, but trying to disrupt the column isn't the best idea. Each car of this natural train has hundreds of needle-sharp bristles. If you touch any of them with your bare hand, they'll first cause sharp pain and then some other unpleasant reactions. Predators don't like pine processionaries for the same reason. Asian giant hornets live mostly in Asian countries, but they were reported in North America in 2019. These beasts are big, yellow, and vicious. It's impossible to confuse a giant hornet with any other bee or wasp. They're much larger and a lot more aggressive. But the worst thing about them is their stinger, which is more than three times longer than that of a honeybee. The stinger contains a really potent venom, and several stings from an Asian giant hornet can bring down even a large animal and a human too. And if that wasn't enough, these creatures can even spray their venom, aiming at the eyes. Needless to say, that's an unforgettable experience. Lenomia is a rather unassuming little moth that doesn't pose a threat to anyone. But before it becomes a moth, it has to go through a caterpillar stage. And that's when you don't want to cross its path. Lenomia caterpillars are covered in hair-thin bristles that contain a powerful venom. But even if you know not to touch them, you still might get pricked. Caterpillars perfectly blend in with tree trunks to add to their protection. A person might unknowingly lean on a trunk with lenomias huddled on it, and they won't hesitate to stick those needles into the unlucky guest. If you get stung, immediately seek medical attention. Now, let's admit, all centipedes are terrifying. And perhaps one of the most horrible species is a Texas red-headed centipede. First of all, it looks like it's ascended from your deepest, darkest nightmares. A black section body, dozens of yellowish legs that look more like claws, and a red head with two long horns. A picture enough to make me run for it in a split second. Here I go. Being pretty large, these crawlers have a voracious appetite, munching on toads, lizards, and an occasional rat. Sometimes, when desperate, they can even catch a bat right in the middle of a flight. And of course, red-headed centipedes are venomous, fitting for such an appearance. Luckily, they're not interested in humans. And that's mutual. Now, this critter isn't large, but it's very defensive, meaning you don't want to cross it. Its name speaks for itself, the Devil's Coach Horse. A total black bug that resembles an earwig, it will raise its behind and open its powerful jaws when threatened. This pose makes it look like a scorpion, and at this point, better back off. If you don't, the Devil's Coach Horse will start to emit a foul stench and ooze unpleasant liquid from its mouth for defense. And if that doesn't scare you off, it will eventually bite, which is quite painful, you know. Just leave the beast alone, okay? Velvet ants aren't ants at all. They're a kind of wingless wasp that just look a lot like ants. These bugs don't form large colonies and usually live alone, hiding in tall grass. This behavior has given them another nickname, cow ants. Because when a cow is grazing nearby, it might step on a velvet ant and get a painful bite in return. Humans also get bitten sometimes, especially if they walk barefoot. Velvet ants are venomous, but their venom is less potent than that of bees, so it's not really dangerous. Still, the pain from such a bite is serious. And if you want to squash this bug, good luck! They have an unusually tough carapace that protects them from other stinging insects and even birds. Puss moths get their name from their furry, fuzzy appearance. It's like their little fluffy flying kitties. Moths might be cute, but their caterpillars, as always, should only be looked at, not touched. Despite the even fuzzier looks, a puss caterpillar is covered in thousands of hollow spines that break off the critter's back upon contact and inject their venom. And what a venom it is! Puss caterpillars are the most venomous caterpillars in the US. One sting of this little monster can result in days and even weeks of sickness, 
And if you're allergic to it, then I can only wish you best of luck. Uh-oh, you're having a bad day. Those two red dots on your ankle look really bad, buddy. Looks like you've been bitten by a snake. You have no idea if it was venomous or not, so here's what might happen next. If it wasn't venomous, consider yourself lucky. You're probably gonna be fine. Still, any snake's fangs carry thousands of bacteria on them, and when they penetrate the skin, these little pests get into your blood to wreak havoc inside your body. The most terrifying of them cause tetanus, a severe condition that's incurable if you don't get medical help in advance. Worse still, you might be that unfortunate person to have an allergy to snake saliva. Like the bees or peanuts, oh yeah, peanuts can be shady. When enzymes in the saliva mix with your blood, your body starts trying to get rid of them. It doesn't realize it's basically fighting itself, so the conflict quickly escalates and you begin feeling nauseous and weak. Eventually, it becomes hard to breathe, and you may even faint. So, even if you've been bitten by a non-venomous snake, call for help pronto. Then, there's a worse scenario. The snake was indeed venomous. Every snake species has its own kind of venom that acts differently from others. Let's see. Ah, it can affect either heart and nerves, muscles, or blood vessels. It always starts with a sharp pain at the place of bite. The snake opened its mouth wide, punctured your flesh with its two upper fangs, and injected its venom through the channels inside them. The venom goes straight into your bloodstream, and that's when the real black magic begins. If the bite marks are clearly seen on the smooth skin, and there's nothing else, it might have been a crate. If the bite starts swelling, it was probably a cobra. You start feeling dizzy, hot, and sweating right away. But that's not venom yet, it's you. You're scared of seeing those bite marks, and the hormones adrenaline and cortisol rush from your adrenal glands into your blood to make you blush and tremble. Your heart's beating faster now, Uh uh-oh, helping the venom spread more rapidly. Soon, you'll start feeling stomach pain and cramps. The toxic enzymes in the snake's venom are reacting with your blood, getting to internal organs and muscles. They're all close to each other, so the toxic stuff hits them quickly and aggressively. And when the venom has gone through your liver, kidneys, and heart, which takes about 15 minutes, it spreads to the nerve endings. It's at this point you begin losing touch with reality. Literally! At first, your eyelids will become increasingly heavy. Eyelid muscles are some of the smallest in the body and have few nerves, which makes them an easy target for venom. Then the toxins go on and on through your circulation, filling your smaller blood vessels like a sponge. And as they do, nerves stop functioning from your head down because they're controlled by the brain. It's just getting worse, isn't it? From your eyes, the numbness spreads across your face. Your lips and cheeks become tight, making you look as if you're annoyed with something. Within an hour or two, you will lose the ability to speak and see. The nerves in your face will have turned off completely. But the effects of the bite will go further down, short-circuiting your tongue, lower jaw, neck, diaphragm… oh boy. When this happens, unfortunately, you're almost beyond rescue. If the diaphragm stops responding, your lungs can't function properly and you stop breathing. And we really shouldn't do that. If you're lucky enough, though, the bite could be light, and then the numbness will not affect your vital systems. It'll still spread from the head down your whole body but won't be able to get deep inside, going through your top layer, so to say. You might lose feelings in your fingers and toes, your skin, and even be unable to move properly. But if you can see and breathe, the symptoms might go away by themselves in a few days. Don't bet on that, though, and call the ambulance as soon as you realize something's wrong. Finally, all this may be completely irrelevant to you, because what you feel is not numbness, it's heartache. Both cobras and elapids have a type of venom that goes straight for your heart. When it gets there, and that's pretty soon, it might make the main muscle of your body beat faster or slower, as well as causing irregular beating. This is a huge strain on your heart. You know what to do. Other muscles can also be affected, especially by sea snake venom. It has special toxins that target muscles, and as your eyes get heavy, you might also feel cramps. 
first in your stomach and then rapidly spreading to your arms, legs, and chest. You will have trouble moving because your muscles will grow stiff, and touching anything will become an ordeal because of the tenderness. In the end, the venom may make you lie in bed and wait until it goes away. If it goes away. Boy, let's just pile on, shall we? Now, if you look at the bite mark and see it swelling, and there's blood from the two punctures, it means you've been bitten by a viper. This venom acts differently and is even more terrifying. Oh gee. Its molecules are larger and can spread so quickly in the bloodstream. That's why they head for your lymph nodes and act from there. As a result, the venom is slow and painful. At first, you will only feel scared and dizzy because of that. Then, after 15 minutes, the venom will start spreading through your body, beginning from where the viper bit you. The thick and viscous substance will mess with your blood, making it clot and causing bruises. The higher it goes, the more of your body it affects. But this progress is slow compared to the effects of cobra and elapid bites. If you don't get medical help, you will notice the swelling growing every hour. As the venom works its way through your lymph, it will make it go against you, causing even more swelling. Lymph is your body's primary defensive barrier. It's a fluid that contains white blood cells which fight diseases. Venom gets into their ranks and causes disarray. White blood cells attack it to no avail, and it spreads ever further. And when the vile thing reaches lymph nodes, they swell, desperately trying to get rid of the intruder. Production of lymph increases, and the bitten part of your body gets more swollen by the hour. Depending on the potency and amount of venom, your limb will grow twice in size by day 2 or 3 from that bite. Since we're talking about your ankle, it's your whole leg that will get afflicted, foot to hip. You won't be able to walk, of course, and sitting will also be off limits. The only hope at this stage is to lie in bed and try not to move. Even this late, there's still a chance your body will cure itself. But if there's any possibility to get you to the hospital, what do you think? Yeah, you should still do it. What the heck? When bitten by a snake, you might panic and do it all wrong. So increase your chances of survival by calming yourself down. Fear will make your heart beat faster, pumping blood through your body and with that, the venom. It still needs time to reach your circulation, so stay calm and lie down, keeping the bitten limb below your heart. Gravity will do the job then. Don't ever try to suck the venom out of the wound. It spreads too rapidly for you to help yourself. You won't even get a drop of it out this way, but only increase your heart rate again by straining. Put away that knife and never try to cut the bite to let out the venom. Like I said, it's already in your blood, and you can make matters worse by cutting. If you didn't have infection inside the wound, you might get it from that knife. Applying cold won't help either. Cold restricts normal blood flow, making venom stay where it is and doing more damage to a single place. Venom might also make tissues more vulnerable to frostbite. You could end up losing a limb. Same goes for tight bandages and tourniquets. When blood flows freely, it lets the venom spread, of course, but also dilutes it, making the substance less potent. The bite might not be as dangerous as you think, but by applying a tight bandage, you can triple its power. Hey, look, you made it! You're in the good place! Wait a minute. Uh Uh-oh. Never mind. You're trembling. Drops of sweat are dripping down your face. Your frightened eyes look up, watching a big flying bug. The Asian giant hornet, the size of a thumb, is hovering above you. It's one of the most dangerous insects on the planet. And not just because its sting looks like a needle. This insect can cause a real economic crisis all over the world and lead to the mass extinction of many species of living creatures on Earth. But we can speak about it later, because now it's going to sting you. The sting of the giant hornet is one of the most dangerous and painful among insects. You're about to find out what happens to the human body after the sting pierces the skin. There's no point in running. The hornet will catch up with you anyway. It flies around you. You hear a strange crackling sound. The hornet flicks its jaws to scare you and keep you at a distance. After a couple of seconds, it attacks. The hornet stings you right in the shoulder. Oh, it doesn't care about your clothes. The stinger can pierce through a thick layer of fabric and even a beekeeper's protective clothing. 
You need a special suit similar to a space suit to be protected from the Hornet. Unfortunately, you don't have one. In the beginning, you feel as if a red-hot needle is piercing your body. Through this needle, the Hornet injects poison into your skin. The substance dilates the walls of the blood vessels around the bite, which makes your skin turn red. Your body fights the foreign substance and sends out immune cells, but the venom destroys your defense cells, causing your skin to swell. The infected blood is filtered out by your kidneys. The poison contains a substance that is toxic to this organ, but your kidneys don't bother you as much as your shoulder. The bite site is swollen and red. It's burning. The swelling can last from hours to days. It's only one hornet, but it can sting you 10 times. Just imagine what would happen if you stirred up a nest. You would have to hide in dense bushes or jump in the water to escape. And if you get stung several times, you need to go to the hospital. In any case, you are lucky that you don't have severe consequences. People with allergies should stay away from giant hornets. The sting can be catastrophic for their bodies. To avoid coming across these monsters, stay away from their nest. You can hear an alarming buzzing sound from afar. Asian giant hornets are aggressive and will sting anyone who walks past their nest. Authorities always get rid of their nests if they appear within city limits, but not only to stop them from attacking people, but also to prevent the apocalypse. And here's how it can happen. One of the Asian giant hornets' favorite things is attacking beehives. They fly far away from the nest, and when they find a hive, they mark it with a unique pheromone. The smell attracts other hornets, and even a small group of them can completely destroy the hive. About 20 hornets can wipe out about 30,000 bees. Imagine the damage that thousands of hornets could do. This is the main danger they present. By transferring pollen between flowering plants, bees help them grow, breed, and produce food. Bees pollinate plants that cows and other livestock eat. Thanks to bees, we have cotton growing. If hornets wipe out bees, there would be a worldwide shortage of cotton clothing. Simple t-shirts, jeans, and jackets would become more expensive and sooner or later disappear from the markets. Many berries and fruits may lose their rich taste and vitamin content. This could lead to a lack of vitamins, not only in animals, but also in humans. So you won't be able to put on your jeans and favorite shirt and go to a restaurant for a juicy burger. Eggplants, hot peppers, kiwis, blueberries, cranberries, and other products would disappear from the stores. Entire species of animals would stop existing along with the plants. This would lead to an even greater crisis, not only in agriculture, but also in the world economy. Imagine dominoes falling one by one. That's what it would look like. Along with this, the number of hornets would increase. There are almost no animals in the world that could control the growth of the hornet population. If people do nothing, everyone would have to wear thick protective suits to walk outside. Hornets would infiltrate homes and cars and sting people and pets. Of course, people are aware of this danger and take all possible measures to control the population of hornets. Unfortunately, Bees can't protect themselves. Their sting can't harm hornets. Bees are much smaller, so they're completely defenseless. But one bee species has developed a fantastic way to resist hornets. Meet the Japanese honeybee. As soon as a giant hornet enters their hive, they instantly attack it, covering the enemy with their bodies. Once the hornet is trapped in this dense living cocoon, the bees begin to vibrate. Their shaking is so fast that they just burn the hornet. After that, the bees discard the much larger insect and go about their business. Well, the strategy is effective for one hornet, but what if many of them appear? Most likely, bees won't be able to cover all enemies. Besides, Japanese bees can't teach other bees how to fight hornets. Fortunately, humans control the giant hornet population. All hornets belong to the wasp family, and among them, the Asian hornet is not the creepiest insect. How about a wasp that can turn other living things into zombies? Spider manipulating wasps can do that. This tiny insect lives in rainforests. It flies between trees, holding an egg most of the day and looks for the perfect host. This host will later take care of the offspring. The wasp examines the local fauna, sniffs, avoids predators and 
notices a web. The spider uses this web to catch other insects. But this time, the spider has become the prey itself. The wasp is getting closer, but doesn't sting. It just drops the egg on the spider's abdomen and flies away. It's done. There's nothing the spider can do now, since the egg is stuck to its back. The hunter probably doesn't even feel the guest. But then, the larva hatches from the egg, and the spider's life becomes a nightmare. Day after day, the wasp larva feeds on the spider. It can't get it off its back, because the baby wasp controls its mind. The larva has injected a special substance into the spider's body. The poison has a terrifying effect on the spider's brain. Now, the spider cares for the larva's life more than for its own. The spider begins to weave an unusually shaped web of stiffer silk. It makes a particular web pattern inside which the larva will be safe. Then, when the baby wasp reaches a certain level of development, it abandons the exhausted spider and clings to the web. Then, it creates a cocoon that will become its home for a while. When the time comes, the wasp emerges from the cocoon. It can fly and is now able to take care of itself. Whether it's a female or a male wasp, the insect starts looking for a mate to create offspring. Then, if it's a female, it lays an egg, grabs it, and begins flying around the jungle looking for a new spider. There are even more inventive parasitic wasps. Meet one of them. When the female is about to lay her eggs, she starts looking for a babysitter. Aha, a ladybug. The wasp flies up to the beetle and releases a single egg through its sting. When the larva goes out of the egg, it makes its way inside its host. 20 days have passed. During this time, the larva has developed inside the ladybug, and now it's getting out. But the babysitter's job isn't done yet. The larva creates a cocoon between the ladybug's hind legs. Inside it, it will evolve into an adult wasp. But to keep the cocoon safe, the larva makes a bodyguard out of its host. If something dares to come close, the ladybug will do its best to protect the cocoon. When the wasp inside the cocoon is formed, it leaves its bodyguard. The way the wasp controls the ladybug's mind is still unknown. There are a lot of parasites besides wasps. Some of them can control animals and even humans. I don't mean to bug you, but spider silk is one of the most durable natural materials on the planet. Kevlar, of which body armor is made, is weaker than the stuff spiders produce inside their bodies. It's hard to believe because if you've ever touched the spider web, you realize you can easily break it. That's because spiders secrete a very thin layer of silk. Most metals would break in no time as well at such thickness. The good news is that there are no huge spiders on our planet, which means you can't get stuck in their trap. The bad news is that if thousands of spiders with the strongest silk in the world join together and weave a single big web, well, you're in trouble. <laughs> the most durable silk belongs to Darwin's bark spider. Its silk is twice as strong as that of other species. The spider is much smaller than most of its kin, but this doesn't prevent it from being one of the most formidable predators in the world. The area of its web reaches 30 square feet, and it's suspended over rivers on incredibly long lines. The female spider shoots a stream of silk, which is caught by winds above the moving waters and carried to the other bank, where it attaches itself to a tree or a bush. The distance could easily be over 80 feet. You can find this natural wonder only in the tropical jungles of Madagascar. Imagine that several hundred Darwin's bark spiders spun a thick web over a river. You're going downstream in a kayak at the same time. From a distance, you don't notice the huge trap. And when you finally do, it's too late. You get caught in the silk, a kayak goes out from under you. You hang in the air. Thousands of web strands vibrate and give the spiders a signal that their dinner is here. You don't have a dagger or a machete to cut yourself free. The first thing you need to do is save your strength and energy. The more you resist, the more entangled you get. The fact is that the spider's web is sticky. The more you move, the more glue gets on you, slowing down your movement. By the way, 
There is a group of the cribellate spiders whose web is completely dry, but the threads are surrounded by clouds of ultrasyn film. If the prey begins to move, these clouds come together and become stronger, entangling the insect even harder. When insects get caught in a spider's web, spiders, especially small species, don't immediately run up to the prey. They are waiting for it to lose all strength to resist. After that, spiders carefully approach the dinner and spit out digestive liquid with venom, which means that the digestion process begins not inside but outside the spider. Then the hunter wraps the body of the insect with silk to form a cocoon, inside which the prey is digested. After that, the spider drinks back its digestive fluid with the food. The process can be repeated several times. Well, let's hear it for recycling. Now, back to you, stuck in a big web. You realize all these terrible events that are about to happen, and your brain begins to work as quickly as possible. From all sides, hundreds of small spiders are running towards you, looking forward to their meal. Mm -hmm. Your time's running out, but then a solution strikes you. You wriggle out of your clothes and fall into the river. Yeah, you're almost naked in the jungle of Madagascar, but it's much better than becoming a dinner for spiders. You're watching as the arachnids climb up on your clothes and wrap it in a cocoon. Now, about those piranhas. <laughs> Just kidding. Some spiders use a strong venom that penetrates the insect's body and dissolves it from inside. But the worst fate awaits an insect that gets caught in the Philippinella vicina spider territory. These spiders don't have venom at all. When a small insect gets into their web, the hunter quickly runs up to the prey, twists it, pulls the silk out with its hind legs, and wraps the insect in it. The spider spends a lot of silk, up to 460 feet. That's twice the length of a passenger Boeing. The spider turns its prey 28,000 times during the wrapping. The insect is literally squeezed under such pressure. After this, the spider secretes digestive fluid inside this cocoon and, well, you get it. Yeah, dinner is served. The web serves not only as a trap for insects, it's the eyes and ears of spiders. Nearly all spiders have weak eyesight, despite having six or eight eyes. We humans can immediately see if a little fly is caught in the web, but the spider doesn't know this. It touches the strands of the web with its eight legs and feels for vibrations that tell it where the prey is or where the web is damaged. Also, the smallest silk vibrations tell the spider about the humidity of the air or the presence of wind. The spider can distinguish the slightest change in the structure of the web, like a musician who hears an instrument is out of tune or doesn't hit the right notes. I said nearly all spiders don't see well because some species can see much better than humans. One of them is a jumping spider. Their vision allows them to see colors that people can't. But this spider is also interesting because it doesn't weave a web for hunting. It sits and waits for its prey. When a fly or beetle lands on a flower nearby, the jumping spider leaps at it and bites it with its sharp fangs. This small predator can jump up to 50 times the length of its body. It uses silk as an insurance cable to soften the fall, avoid falling on the ground, or return to the original position if it couldn't catch the prey. But you should not be afraid of them, because jumping spiders are actually cute, and many people even keep them at home as pets. Some species of spiders use silk to travel long distances. They shoot strands of it, like one famous superhero, and use them for climbing. Others use wind instead. Their silk is so light that the wind blows it away with the spider. You could say such spiders can fly. And then there are wolf spiders. They don't jump or weave. Instead, they run after their prey, making them the sprinters of the spider world. Unlike jumping spiders, wolves are bigger and look quite scary. When they catch up with their prey, they inject it with venom. But the worst thing is that these spiders have adapted to live in any conditions from cold mountain peaks to hot deserts and rainforests. People who fear and hate spiders should remember that these creatures control the insect population. Without spiders, the number of insects will increase dramatically, and all agriculture will be threatened. Wheat, corn, vegetables, and fruit may disappear, resulting in a global food crisis. Remember this when you want to hit a spider with a slipper. 
There are about 45,000 known species of spiders that live all over the world. But some scientists believe there are twice as many species that we don't know anything about yet.